Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my majestic universe. This is the Pro Wrestling Zone Podcast, a majestic production, where you will hear the news and reviews of everything professional wrestling with a twist. You have never heard another pro wrestling podcast like this, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And without further ado, let me introduce to you your hosts of the Pro Wrestling Zone, Tiger Height and Peanut Gallery. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Zone. This is episode number seven. We're going to be talking about a lot, including Hell in a Cell and the probably one of the greatest weeks in professional wrestling ever. Honestly, sure. I am we'll Tiger Height. This is Peanut Gallery. Ugh. So we just got done with Hell in a Cell. We're both not sober. Let's put it that way. But there was a lot to go on with this goddamn pay-per-view that had four matches announced before getting into it! Calm. Now that's going to be my attitude basically to the course of the show. Great. So Also, thank you DraftKings for the sponsorship. We really fucking appreciate it! <laughs> okay, are you done being an asshole? Like, yes. seriously, are you done right now? I'm, yes. I'm really not happy. Okay. But hey, let's start off with a really good match. Because this is Hell in a Cell. One, Hell in a Cell had a new setup. And it was different from every other show. And I hope that is a trend that will be consistent throughout the course of everything. Hooray. Well, no. I mean, you have... You, I mean, you, I don't care! You don't, but there are a lot of people who do. I'm sorry, but pay-per-views need to feel like pay-per-views. But when the stage is... The same? It doesn't feel like that. Okay, great. I'm excited. For what? There is nothing about this hell, pay-per-view hell, to be no, excited it's, about. It's not that it's... You see, Peanut, Peanut Gallery does not see that. I mean, the, the show itself was not the best. Because oh, God, it was, it, was, it, it, was, it was great until it became garbage. Until it became a big heaping pile of shit. See, what happens is kind of like a diaper. You get a fresh, clean diaper on, you feel great for like 20 minutes, and then you just have to take a shit. <laughs> now, that is a personal, that's a personal experience I haven't felt when I was... Hang on. I'm going to check my timer here. About 25 years? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fuck you. So, the first match... No, I mean, when, when it's, like, a big event like this, I mean, even even if it doesn't look like it, a special event, it's like, okay, WrestleMania. Would WrestleMania feel like WrestleMania if it didn't have... No, the, but this is hell in a cell at pay-per-view that I know. obviously no one it's still, cared it's, about. It's, it's still a show. Okay. It's still a pay-per-view. Okay, great. So let's move hell, on. Hell, hell can can cell, we move on to the actual matches, please? Hell, hell in a Cell is a victim of circumstance in this situation. Can we please move on to the matches? Yes. First match. I'm, I'm surprised this was the first match. Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks in a Hell in a Cell match for the Raw Women's Champion. This was, I swear to God, the match of the night. That was best match of the night. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it was absolutely. that freaking good. Yep, it was. It was awesome. Yep. I mean, we. I thought that their match at SummerSlam was good. I liked it, up until the ending, obviously. This match exceeded that expectation and went above it tenfold. Yep. It was good. It felt like it felt like they hated each other. There was a lot going on. It had a good amount of time. I mean, I think it was like what, 25, 30 minutes, something like that. It was good. Yeah. I mean, it was a big blow-off match and I'm happy for it. Yeah. Becky Lynch won with the disarm her. Right. Clean victory in the Hell in a Cell match. Yep. I was uber satisfied with this match. Great. It was now, great. Now let's move on to the crap in this match. No, there was there was another match that I thought was actually okay. It could have been better. 
Eric Rowan and Luke Harper versus Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. Now, I skipped most of this match because I was cooking dinner. Also, yeah. this rivalry was pretty crappy. It wasn't crappy, but the thing was is that— I mean, It got too convoluted. It was a little convoluted. There was some stuff, and I hope that some of these people are actually injured. Let's put it that way. Uh, Luke Harper grabbed his knee, which looked a little concerning. And yep. after that, he was pretty much a non-factor in the match, yeah. which makes me really concerned. Uh, Roman Reigns also grabbed his leg, which, I mean, he hit the spear and he seemed to be fine. So maybe it was just a thing. Maybe, maybe. He tweaked it. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, shit, I tweak my leg when I get up in the morning. Right. I mean, that's because I'm a klutz, but still. Oh, well, yeah. Um, But overall, I thought that the match itself... It could have been better, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. You missed a lot of it. I actually yeah. saw a lot of it. It was a good, brutal match. It, it, it leads more to a match in the future. Right. So I think sure. there's going to be that. It was a Superman punch, Daniel Bryan knee, and a uh-huh. spear on Luke Harper for the win. I feel like Luke Harper was not the right person to be pinned. Maybe they have a bigger part on for Eric Rowan now. Yeah. Because Luke Harper did announce his um, release, or he asked for it. Maybe that's his punishment. Right. But I thought overall it wasn't a bad match. Right. But that's just me. Obviously, you saw uh, uh, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan hugged, which I even told Peanut Gallery. I'm like, I thought this would never be a sentence I would type out in my phone, but it was. Okay, great. So I liked it. Now that that match was over, let's move on to the crap of the show. Ugh. So, like I said, they the only, smear in the pants. They, of the show. they they literally only had four matches announced going into this. The rest of it was either announced on the pre-show, or on Twitter, or during the pre-show itself. Right. And this is one of them: Randy Orton versus Ali. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Ali or Randy Orton. Both of them are amazing. Competitors. This match should not have been on a pay-per-view television screen. SmackDown. If this match, if this match in this context was on the SmackDown on Fox, I would be okay with yep. it. Yep. Because they actually did not do the most garbage match in the world. They actually had a good match. No, but it was still pretty bad. Um, Ali's counter with the RKO with doing the handstand was really, really cool, and yep. a lot of people popped for it. But then Ali did a little gazelle thing where he like flies into the ring in a somersault, and Randy Orton hit the RKO. I thought that was a cool spot. Yeah, I liked it. Um, Randy Orton did win. He gave a little, like, nod of respect to Ali, which is deserved because Ali's a really good wrestler. Sure, but this match was pretty was pretty crappy. Randy as far Orton, as Randy Orton looked like Andre the Giant. As far though. as any build goes, this was pretty bad. Right. Now, like I said, if it, this was on any other show, we would not have such big of a problem, but this is on a pay-per-view. Right. Like I said, I mean, a lot of this is going to be that kind of a complaining is this is a pay-per-view. That if no one, that on, obviously no one cared to build any matches for. Oh, what if what if Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens' ladder match was on the show? Right. There's a build to it. Yeah. And that was a good match. Yeah. And I'd have been fine with it. Or Kofi Kingston versus Brock Lesnar. Even with the nine second win, this still would have been a better placement overall, <sighs> with Kane Velasquez getting into it. But we're gonna get into that later, obviously. Fuck. All right. So. Let's move on to the yes, next. Yes, one. Uh, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss versus Kabuki Warriors for the Women's Tag Team Champions. The Kabuki Warriors won with the green mist and then the kick to the head to, I think it was Nikki Cross, was it? Yeah. Yes, it was. Which I actually, I, I like lo- the heel turn. I love the heel turn of the Kabuki Warriors. Yes. They this needed is, that. They needed this so fucking bad. You have <laughs> no idea. Uh, the match itself was not bad, though. All I right. thought it was a good match. I liked it. I, th- I thought it was a good tag team match. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross have a chemistry that only friends can have, and they do. Yep. And I'm very happy about that. Yep. It was good to see. Yeah. And it's good to see new tag team champions. It's good to see the Kabuki Warriors as champions. There was nothing inherently wrong about this match. No. Um, kind of random, and the fact that Paige wasn't there is weird. And you said that she was injured. I don't know from what. Maybe because I put my dick in her. But anyway. You wish. You're right. So, (laughs) now, this was originally scheduled to be a regular tag team match, but it turned into a six-man because reasons. Sure. The OC versus Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman. Do these fucking morons not realize that AJ Styles has a championship or Shinsuke Nakamura? Hang on. Has a championship. 
that they can defend? Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> there are no rivalries. They're all done. I wouldn't care if it was or was not. What, do you want to see Cedric Alexander versus AJ Styles for the 10th time? I would rather have that instead of this. Well, I mean, you got crap. <laughs> I mean, you, you have you have a log of shit in one hand and a pile of crap in the other. I would so. rather have the pile of crap at least with Cedric Alexander and AJ Styles. How about Braun Strowman and AJ Styles for the United States Championship? Ha, there is no bill to that one. Who fucking cares? I do. God, I mean, what would you rather have seen? AJ I Styles would've... versus Braun Strowman and Shinsuke Nakamura versus fucking whoever for the U- for the championship. I would have rather have not seen this pay per view happen. And I wish they push it back a week. They're not going to. No, of they've course already not. They have Crown enough. Jewel, and then there's Premier Week, which we'll cover here soon. Fuck uh, this Premier Week crap! Seriously. No, it makes sense, but it no, was it's fucking victim crap. Of circumstance. Fucking crap. So literally, I think I missed. Almost the entirety of this match because... No one I, cared! It was a clusterfuck. It was a clusterfuck. Uh, Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman won by DQ. Braun Strowman basically knocked out Styles to promote the Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury match. Yep, which is why this match existed. <sighs> they could have done this better. Let's put it that well, way. Well, of course. They well, mean- shit. I, I could have written this fucking show better in three hours with one of my hands in my pants. Which you did, and it was actually a better show. <laughs> this is true. So, King Corbin versus Chad Gable. Now, the fact that this match happened is not my problem. My problem is that they continue to promote the fact that Chad Gable is small. He's actually not. Eight, five foot eight is the average height of a human being. He's not that short. And Baron f- Corbin is six foot eight. He's not very small. He's a tall human. And Chad Gable And is... oh my god, the short jokes. I am going to kill everyone on commentary because of their short Even jokes. Even the announcer with the winner, Shorty Gable. I swear oh, to God, swear if that's to god, his name, I'm I am scream. going to I'm going to kill every writer in WWE if that is the case. <laughs> the next show will literally be an hour of me just ranting and raving of that name if that's his actual name. Chad Gable is fine. Even Gable. If it was just Gable, I'd be fine. No, but it's the, gonna... the announcer literally said Shorty Gable. And I don't know if they were in the moment or what, but fuck me. I mean, seriously, that's the best you can come up with no, for a rivalry? That's, that's, that's not, it? No, that's not my problem. Literally, that's my problem. My problem is that they cannot do a better thing. They've got the star power in the world to do something meaningful with these goddamn superstars. They don't do crap because guess not, what? The writers suck at their job. It's not like Chad Gable is an Olympic level Exactly. <laughs> I mean, God and damn even, it. And even like Chad said, Gable is not short. And Baron Corbin is not that honestly bad. They actually had a okay They just match. book him as a piece of shit, which is fine. But still, it's just like, is that the best? Is that honestly the best as far as the rivalry goes you can come up with? I'm just going to let is, Gallery is, go right now. I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the writers. The writers deserve to be in a match with the Fiend Bray Wyatt because the writers are that awful at their jobs. <laughs> the, the writers deserve to have a short dagger with curves go up their urethra <laughs> they deserve to be on the short bus are you kidding me i hope they get ebola so- <laughs> <laughs> oh my i hope so too <laughs> no in I mean, saudi arabia like i said I, the match itself was not my problem in this match actually i thought the match was okay it i was okay it. but still the whole premise of this fucking rivalry is garbage chad gable is not short. Is garbage like the log of shit in my pants because of how awful In reality, this was. he is not short and he deserves a lot better. Yep. He is such a good athlete and he has yep. great charisma. He is. Yep. If they book him right, he will be the next Kurt Angle. Yep. I guarantee it. Yep. I mean, it should have been Jason Jordan, but Jason Jordan is a victim of circumstance at this point. All right. So moving on to the next boring fuck up. What was the next match? Oh, uh, Bailey and Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Champion. I did not honestly have a problem with this match entirely. I didn't either. Um, I'm glad that now there's one team out of the four horsemen that have the titles. Yes, yeah, I knew Flair, it was going to move over. Win, right, Charlotte Flair did win with the figure eight, 
which makes her a 10-time champion more than any other woman in the history of WWE, who, in honesty, she deserves it. She is an no amazing. one cares about that. Okay. Well, no, it, it no, no. Does. I want to talk about. I want to talk about the rivalry. So this the- is this is my show. Shut up. <sighs> uh, let me uh, let me at least finish okay. my piece. You okay. bitch about Gable for ten minutes. And I let you go. I know, but you're gonna suck on Charlotte's dick for ten minutes. So let's. Yes, let's- I will because she is that much of an amazing athlete. She deserved to beat Trish Stratus. She deserves this. She is an amazing fucking wrestler how can you not see that and it's not because she came out of rick flair's penis oh i'm not saying that she's awful i'm saying that you just give her too much praise we're not talking From about what? the wrestlers who else could have beaten bailey for this belt nobody nobody people bitch all the time that she gets all these title shots you know why because she's the best women's wrestler other than maybe becky lynch and tessa fucking blanchard in all of women's professional goddamn wrestling i'm not saying that it's a problem i'm saying that you give people too much praise and they say oh nice person nice person no 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 talk about the circumstances okay charlotte won they were going to give it to her or they were going to have the heels have it eventually in right. my in my opinion i think that the heels should have had it but no, no I, fucking way but i do like how bailey kind of looked like a sasha banks there after the match was over yeah she had a she had a little temper tantrum got really pissed off which is like, i, I wonder i wonder if that was a work or if that was like irl Anyways, I think it was a work. I think they're really going to have these two just bitter bitches taking on the champions. Fuck the bitter bitches. I'm really hoping. Oh, my God. That is a great name for a tag team. Right? Instead, Instead of, of the Boston, Boston Hug, the bitter the bitches. bitches. <laughs> now, th- this could be a scenario if done right. What if the tag team champions winner take all for both belts at Crown Jewel? That's not going to happen because it's in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I mean, there's there's this and then... Women, Survivor... women, women, women like them get shot in Saudi Arabia. Oh, I know. And then there's that and then there's Survivor Series. So either way, it's a win-win with them having But if Becky match. Lynch is called the man, then will they allow her to wrestle in Saudi Arabia? These are facts. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, now, the, let's move on the to the, last, the last final match. match of the night. It, it was, was the, the Fiend versus the Beast Slayer, and it was probably the most awful but greatest things I've seen all week. I am not mad about <laughs> that. Pr- it pretty much sums up WWE's week. Like so, that yeah. match. Perfectly personified. You you liked the lighting. I, I was bothered by it. It was the bright, lighting. Okay. It was bright ass red the entire time, and I was frustrated by it. Okay, so who the fuck is the fiend? Sin fucking Kara. Sorry. Go no. Ahead. So I like the lighting. I didn't like the circumstances the lighting was placed in, but it to me it should have been more like a a final deletion rather than like a traditional wrestling match because the mood was there maybe but it shouldn't have been for the belt the build was great the problem is is that it was for the belt it was for the belt and it's like oh they clearly don't want to take it off of rollins right now and even though seth rollins sucks and then putting it on bray white i get why he's the most talked about thing in wrestling with his fiend character but they put themselves into this corner of, it's a lose lose. I'm sorry, give there Bray are... give Bray Wyatt at least five or six matches to really build up that allure of the fiend instead of one. But here's here's the thing about the fiend God about damn. about this build. The build for this match was probably the best I've seen in months. I get that, and that's the fine, allure but... was there. And what I like, the only redeeming thing about this match was that the allure was not lost. However, the way in which the match ended was totally wrong. How can you have a disqualification in a Hell in a Cell match? So Please Rollins... explain this to me. So the. Let me at least give you some context. No, they already know what happened. No, they don't. Because some people don't, didn't actually watch it because they don't care. Because there were four matches announced. Let's at least be let's at least be courteous okay. to at least let them know okay. the ending. So the Fiend walks in bull well, not no, bullshit, no, no. not so bullshit. Wyatt, Wyatt Ten had, stomps. He had a chair, a ladder, and a toolbox basically on his face. Rollins grabs a sledgehammer, 
about to smash it into this contraction of shit. The referee's saying, no, no, you are better than this, which builds on this whole, the Fiend is getting to Rollins, which, to be honest, I liked. Yeah. I thought that moment was really, really good. But then he smashes him, and the referee stops the match. This is a Hell in a Cell match. I'm sorry. No disqualifications, pinner submissions only. Does that not compute? I'm sorry, did they no. do that with Mick Foley? No, sorry. that does not compute. That's the problem. The problem is, is that I, I like the mood of the match, but I did not like the fact that it was an official sanctioned match. If it was like no rules, no none of this bullshit with referees. I mean, honestly, the referees don't know the fuck they're doing. I, mean, I don't. I don't know if WWE knows what they're doing. We're going to describe that later after the fucking break. Oh my god. I mean, like I said, this is why this match perfectly personified WWE's week. But great least, characters, great builds, but crappy execution right. of nearly everything that right. you do. How can you fuck that up? At least, at least the what they should have what they should have the, done. The post the post match was fine. Yeah, they they kept the allure they, of Bray yes, Wyatt they did. as the fiend, where he puts on the mandible claw, he <sighs> destroys Rollins. Rollins keeps the title. Nobody, honestly, was entirely buried fully. But but what, sh what they should have done was they should have had the lights go out. They should have put Wyatt in the title match in the first place. No, what they should have done is they should have they should have turned off the lights. Wyatt disappears, and then Seth Rollins is just left there. Like okay, why? Well, what? I mean, okay. Because that, that would have built the allure pretty well. Why? How? He was... A disqual okay, so what's better, disqualification or that? I wish the match didn't happen in the first place. Okay, so you don't have that option. So I, <laughs> like I said, like I said, would you rather have that bullshit disqualification finish in a Hell in a Cell match or Bray Wyatt just disappear? And, and Seth Honestly, Rollins... Honestly, if, if it was between the two, the ending was right. No. A... Him disappearing would have made the fiend look like a pussy. Or a coward or something. Yes. And they don't want that. At least with this, they saved face. Yeah, where that's true. The referee was a person who stopped the match. It oh, was so not because yeah, of any so kind the, of disqualification. So so the referee got scat on, on purpose. Yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. Oh You see how this happens where mm. Rollins had this fight of this is not me, but I'm gonna do this because I cannot beat the fiend. And then the fiend attacks him, beats him up, keeps the fiend safe. Well, well, Rollins obvious. Rollins does not lose the belt. Right. They put themselves in this situation, and they did the ending that saves them both somewhat. Yeah. Rollins was booed the fuck. The crowd hated it. But looking at it now, I see why they did it. This match was made before Eric Bischoff and Paul Heyman took over. Maybe. This was a McMahon decision. Oh, that's true. This was a McMahon decision. And luckily, at least Paul Heyman had the had the wherewithal to do this. Right. And I have to at least give them credit on that. They have saved both guys to where Rollins can go in as Universal Champion. And who else is going to actually beat Bray Wyatt right now? There's nobody. He, and, cannot, and there... he cannot have this belt right now. Right. It would be a bad choice. And the, then the problem is, is that the next pay-per-view, theoretically, which is going to be Survivor Series, they're not going to have The Fiend lose to right. Brock Lesnar. They're, well, they're, right, exactly. I, I, they, saved, they saved it. They saved Wyatt as The Fiend character. They saved Seth Rollins. And they have at least a good match with Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. As long as, as long as Crown Jewel does not change that. Whoop de fuck! Well, it's not going to change the Universal title. What about WWE? Cain oh, Velasquez, Brock Lesnar. Who cares about that one? I, would, I mean, I would be okay with seeing Seth Rollins versus Cain Velasquez. I'd be okay with that. I but think that'd be not, cool. I don't think it's for the title. I know, but I mean, at least I mean, look, I think this ending, despite everybody's initial reaction, was the right move. And, and I, this is, and and, this is and, me and, being and, not. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking online. I'm looking online, and and I think that. Holy shit. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm looking online. A lot of people are saying the same thing. They actually enjoyed the ending. They they like the way in which the ending happened. It was the right move because it was the right move. It was the right. It move. was not. It was. It was not. It, they didn't like it. They just liked it compared to all the other options. I'm going to say this. 
The Fiend as a character does not need a championship. Oh God, no! To be the credible threat that he is. Oh no, no, absolutely. It's not. like Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman does not need a championship to know that Braun Strowman is an amazing right. physical competitor. I think Braun Strowman should have the belt, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't need it. I think the title on The Fiend would be a detriment right now for the character. Yeah. All right. Well, that, uh, is, that is just me. I okay. Mean, okay, overall, that was the end of Hell in a Cell. I think of what they had as a part of the table with Premier Week being before and Crown Jewel coming up where that is the mega show. It wasn't bad. <laughs> Premier Week. Oh, my God. It was. Well, I know. But this the Premier Week was also bullshit, at least for parts of it. So well, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to yeah. it. At the, at the next part, we're going to go into a break. Um... I liked, I loved the first match. I really liked the last match, at least to the ending. I liked it. I liked, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this pay-per-view. I, I, I think that it should have been, it should have just not happened. But Right. I mean, or at least pushed back a week. If it, was, if it was at least was, pushed back was, a week, they could have done something with build-up. They were going to push it back, Adam. I know. All right, Who? well, Tiger, let's <laughs> just move on to the premiere because I'm bored of this pay-per-view. All right, we're, we're going to go into a break. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
thank you for listening to the Pro Wrestling Zone podcast, a Majestic production. If you enjoyed this program, feel free to follow us on all social media platforms. Links in the description section of wherever you're watching this. We are on all channels. We will be doing this once at least a week, and we will let you know when we go live. Also, if you want to support us further and get great exclusive content, including watch parties, merchandise, signings, and any and all future shows, become a patron today at patreon.com forward slash majestic P. That again is patreon.com forward slash majestic P. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or morning. And as always, be majestic. <laughs>